Well, how about when you got got more into ECW and you guys shared a locker room and everything like that more so? Um, so my first impression of him then was that he was nuts. That was okay. my first impression of him. Yeah. Um, and I'm, if you recall, I've, I've explained how like Sabu brought me in and showed me around the dressing room and, and told me like, he said, most of these guys, you know, a lot of them don't work except for here or a couple of promotions right here in town. So they think they're better than they are, but those guys over there, they suck. <laughs> you know, they <laughs> Those guys, yeah, they're all right, but they think they're better, whatever. Um, uh, what? So um, during this time, uh, the first time I remember noticing Taz, he, you know, we dressed in this big warehouse mm-hmm. uh, for, for the floats that they had oh, there. The, yeah. Uh, oh my God! May, Marion, May, May, Mayflower, Mayfair. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. And that's what the uh, Viking Hall or or what's it called now? The Address Arena, twelve twenty three. Oh. Yeah, the twenty three hundred arena. Mm-hmm. Yeah, twenty three hundred. So that's what it, what it was anyway. Um, they it was a place where they stored all these big floats, and. Um, and so our, our dressing room was a big open room when the ceiling was way up there. There was steps that went up to a second level and that was still um, visible, you know, because of the ceiling space and stuff. So you could see everything. And then, then you went through like a little passageway and there was a much bigger area where the floats actually were. And there was like an outhouse back there. That was what we had to, uh, to use if we had to uh, pee or something at first. Um, and, uh, that's where I met Ray Mysterio. I was, I was walking out there one time and he was with a, uh, a fan, the dude that used to be in the front row with the dreadlocks and, oh, and that man. dude, that dude with the, with the dreadlocks, uh, who lots of crazy stories, not s- several anyway, with that dude, but, um, he had the loudest, loudest, um, weed. Like I was like, I was, I'm going to go to the outhouse. I was like, whoa and i was just like turning i looked and there was like a little a little thing where there was like a second level that dropped down and you could kind of like see yeah. up you could see in between and uh rob rob hey do you do you, do you smoke weed i was like do i <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh but back uh back through the door into where everyone's dressing uh taz would be surrounded literally by his guys team taz he had uh how many were there six guys maybe uh or so and they had orange jackets on team taz and they stood in a circle around him and he stood in the middle and uh he was getting it this is in the dressing room and uh, he would get himself uh warmed up you know just <sighs> You know, like getting warmed up and like uh, rocking back and forth and, and getting all tensed up before the show. And I remember like uh, sometimes if it, if uh, I had to talk to him, uh, I would have to go through them, you know, and and, uh, and they and they would have to tell Taz, <laughs> who's right behind him, tell Taz, hey, uh, you know, RVD wants to talk to you. And, uh, they would have, it was, yeah, it was it was it was intense, and also I thought it was crazy. And uh, I've been on uh, Taz's radio show, and uh, we talked about this. He doesn't remember it at all, uh, or he doesn't remember it that way anyway. So that you know, that's really funny because um, that's that's how it was. How about that? It's almost it feels like almost like like a fucking nightclub, like a speakeasy. You have to go into where it's like. 